Tim Mitchell. He is the co-owner of a human resources outsourcing company. It's called HR Outsourcing Inc. His company has been able to stay afloat and help other small companies save money despite some of these tough economic conditions that the country is now facing. Tim, nice to see you. Good to see you again, Melissa. Appreciate it. Again, you launched in 2001. So yes. you've essentially become successful because you made it past that five-year difficult window. Mm -hmm. What has that been like? Well, the first couple years, you know, were challenging. And then after that, the, the more you grow, the easier it seems to be. And uh, But uh, the first few years are challenging. But after that, it does get easier. Okay, so the f first few years in a good economy are challenging. Right. What would it be like today for someone to be launching a company? We well, you know it's interesting you bring that up because I think there's probably no better time to start a business because mm. uh, for a number of reasons, you can get uh, employees, good employees right now, and a company is just as good as its yes. employees. And uh, on vendors and supplies, you can get great deals. So I think there's great opportunity out there right now. You hear a lot from uh, HR professionals, career counselors, saying if you even have to take a volunteer job, now might be the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, how now would be a good time to get employees. Now might be a good time to get volunteers if you're trying to launch a company, I would That's think, right. as well. That's right. That's a good point. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the success you had and find out what other people can learn from that as well. You started with a business partner, just mm -hmm. the two of you. Eric and I. Back yes. in 2001. You're mm -hmm. still together. Yes. Often there can be some animosity, though, in the workplace. How did you guys work together versus go your separate ways? Uh, Eric and I have a great relationship. We've known each other nearly 20 years. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of compromise there, you know, give and take, but we agree 99% of the time anyway. And it's probably like a marriage, a business partner mm -hmm. is, and you just have to, you know, be considerate and, you know, uh, get along to go along, so to speak. We got HR outsourcing company here based in Atlanta. How does your business model now look different from it when you first crafted the company? Um, the concept is, is uh, pretty much the same, you know, outsourcing of payroll, employee benefits, workers' comp, all in one-stop shopping type of atmosphere. <laughs> But as we've grown, we're able to get steep discounts for our clients, which is why we're able to do so well right now, because companies are looking for ways to save money, and we provide that for them. Mm -hmm. So you're actually doing well when other people are struggling. Um, yes. I mean, we're, we're doing well, and it's because we have a good product and we save companies money. Mm -hmm. So companies are looking for ways to become more efficient, reduce their cost, and we provide that solution for them. Okay. Without giving away... Uh, all of the tidbits and, and, and all of the services that someone would come to you and pay for. Mm -hmm. What's What suggestions do you have for people right now when they're trying to cut costs when sure. they are launching their own company? Sure. Um, you know, I think it's important to keep your overhead very, very low. Mm -hmm. You can get great talent out there right now. And um, I think it's important just to keep your mind in the game, you know? I mean, keep providing the good service, and uh, people will still respond to that even in tough economic times. A moment ago, we were talking to Michael, who has launched a company just in 2008. Love his product. Okay, I wanted to ask you, what advice would you have for him? Because he's launching the company now in a different marketplace than the one in which you launched. Mm -hmm. The advice I'd have of Michael is just to focus on getting a, a good book of customers, and I think he's doing that. He's He's had some great growth early on, mm -hmm. and it's because I think he's got a great product, and uh, he's obviously very marketing savvy, and I think if he just continues down that path of building a good customer base, he'll, he'll do great. Speaking of marketing, he talked about marketing strictly online and more of that organic marketing. Is that the way to go right now? I think so. I think the Google uh, marketing, and we, we, do, we do some Google advertising ourselves. It's... Uh, it's a lot of bang for the buck, and it's very convenient. Uh, people can go right online, pull up anything they want, and uh, I think it's really the wave of the future. I want to talk to you also a little bit about HR in general. For someone that may be sitting at home right now, sitting in the office, scared about losing his or her job or has lost his or her job, what advice do you have for them? You know, my advice would be for someone who just lost their job or is getting laid off or just looking for a new job would be to just network tremendously, let everyone you know what you do, what skills you bring to the table, and keep your resume to one page. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see a lot of, we get a lot That's of resumes. That's a big thing for you, isn't it? I, I, I can see it in your face. <laughs> people don't want to spend a lot of time reading a multiple page resume. Mm -hmm. Keep it in one page and keep your accomplishments very short and brief but powerful. 
Okay, but what you think is an accomplishment somebody else might not. So how do you know what people are really looking for on there? Things that are result-oriented and bottom-line driven. So you're talking about real numbers. Real numbers, something of value that's really add, added to that organization that either contributed towards their growth, efficiency, or profits. And what if you're reinventing yourself right now? If you've worked in IT for 20 years, you've worked in uh, education for 20 years, and you have to change the way you're seen, how do you do that on a resume? You know, my advice to someone like that would be to pursue your dream. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that makes you happy and you enjoy doing, now's no, there's no better time than to go for that right now. And how do you sell yourself like that? How do you convince someone to take a risk on you? It's a great question. I think you just have to have passion for it. And I think that people are convinced with that kind of passion and you just have to work hard. And how do you get that passion to come across in a resume? Again, I would be very <laughs> short and concise, yeah. but at the same time, use words that have a big impact. Okay, again, Tim, uh, one of our success stories, Michael, also uh, small business owners, but, but, but I'm curious what you have in terms of plans for the future. Do you want to keep your business a small company here based in Atlanta, or do you No, have we're actually lofty? looking at, uh, at growing mm -hmm. because uh, right now, more than ever, you can get great deals on office space, leasing, mm -hmm. employees. So we're actually looking at uh, expanding and growing our business. All right. So again, real opportunities for you and for so many people out there who with that true entrepreneurial spirit. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for the advice as Thank well. Thank you, Melissa.